hello there. Welcome to a delayed two idiots. We haven't been done one for a while because we're in COVID lockdown and we're not allowed to see each other or cough to each other or anything like that. We're, we're, I mean, anything we meet anyone in, in um, Scotland is meant to be in big surgical suits or something, uh, like space suits where you can't get anywhere near anybody. So uh, that stops us doing these because we actually like in the same room doing them, but... We still can't do that quite yet, but we're doing this one via the phone because it's uh, the Centre Cup. We thought it would be quite good to do one for the Centre Cup before it's well past anyone's interest. So we thought it would be better one to do. So we're going yeah. to do it anyway, despite limitations, because we prefer being together doing it so we can slide each other off, basically. Does it mean we'll all look each other? Oh, you can talk. Look at that beard. Come on. A big target, no, an easy target. Uh, do you have your lunch now, beard? Is that what your lunch had in that beard? So you can have a munch as you go? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aye. All right. All right. So we're, we're going to talk about the standard cut. We'll also cover the theatrical cut as we go, because you can't really do one without the other. But I think we've covered the theatrical cut a little bit when we talked about the Batman films, didn't we? Pretty sure we did. I think we you just slightly covered it. Yeah, because it was uh, wasn't really worth covering. It was no. it was kind of crappy, or boring, or kind of uh, mediocre. Which actually it looks a lot worse now when you actually see the center cut because the center cut's a lot better mm-hmm. than anyone thought it was going to be. Because um, even if you you had your hopes up a little bit, you'd probably expect it to be a bit shaky still. Yeah. But it wasn't. You're looking at me as if there's something weird in my chin or something. That's just how you look. All right. That's just my face. Aye. All right. Okay. I try not <laughs> to look at you directly when I'm talking to you, so All right. it's weird having you right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, is, is that for your own sanity? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah, um, so the... So I'll let you go first with impressions of the Snyder Cut. Well, I was actually one of the few people really looking forward to the Snyder Cut because I quite like Zack Snyder's films. I've always liked his films. And yeah. when he said it was four hours long, Even I was... Sucker wasn't... Punch. Uh, we don't talk about Sucker Punch. Yeah, I just thought they was... add that one. <laughs> just... Sucker Punch is gorgeous to look at. Not to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I so when they, when they announced it was four hours long, I was buzzing because I'm a big fan of the ultimate cut of Watchmen. That's my favourite version of the movie, the three yeah. and a half hour long one. So that was a walking apart for me, a four hour film. So a lot of people were moaning it was too long, but I thought it was perfect. I personally thought it should have been on a bit longer. Yeah. I wanted more. That's that's my only issue with it. I wanted more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the thing is, I probably feel the ultimate cut, the cider of Watchmen as well, of all three, but mm-hmm. I'm still a film, still a film I have a lot of problems with, generally, because I'm also a big fan of Watchmen, but both are, but I thought the film was very flawed version, you liked it a lot more than I did, so it was like two different opinions on mm-hmm. that one film. Watchmen. Yeah, that's because you're thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so basically with different opinions, uh, you liked Dawn of the Dead a lot as well, didn't you? Yes. The, yeah. I Surprisingly quite like it. a good remake. I know. It's, um, it's kind of annoying because you were hoping to hate it. I was hoping to hate it, but then I loved it. Yeah. And we should both point out, we both just got the Dawn of the Dead um, 4 disc, 4K UHD thing come through yesterday. So we're both... Very excited. We're both Romero fans. So yes. when we say we like Dawn of the Dead remake, it's... It's, and it's not through gritted teeth, that's quite a compliment. Yes. It's a film that I wanted to hate, but I couldn't. Yes. And then there was 300, which I think you like a lot more than I do. I really like 300, yeah. yeah. I really I, enjoy 300. I enjoy it, but I don't love it, because I think it's based on a really stupid... I think the, the, the source material was kind of stupid at times, but I think the style was very good. It's a good Sunday movie. Yeah. It's... Um, it was written when Frank Miller had kind of gone a bit mental. It was on the verge of going mental at that point. It on was, the verge. 
it was showing signs of where we was going. Yeah. It was, it was, it was signs of things were going pear-shaped at that point. It's not all starring Batman and Robin insane, but he's still insane. Yeah. But it can but it was still an enjoyable film. It was just a bit odd. But mm-hmm. you liked it more than me. So generally the pattern is you like these films more than I do. Yeah. Really. Other, other than Batman versus Superman, I li- the only thing I really like in that film is Batman. Everything else I've got problems with. Everything else. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean I mean Batman v Superman I like more than you do, but every other film you like more than I do, probably. Yeah, I quite like Man of Steel. I was shocked how much I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too, but I had major problems with it. I thought there was that last third was just too much. It was just so much. Yeah, and I and I still and my problems with it are lessened by seeing the three films. Now I'm seeing the three films. You get yeah. again. I have no idea what the head versus Superman was, but at the time. <coughs> I, I like Superman to actually be a figure of hope, and this guy was a grumpy Superman, Henry Cavill. So I, I, I thought it was a bit dark for my take in Superman. So it's always been a thing is I prefer a lighter version of Superman. But I, I, I like Superman character better than, more than you do, generally. I can't hear you. Is that better? Yes. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Superman as a character in general. Uh, I try to avoid reading Superman based stuff because it bores me. Yeah. By the way, I'm keeping that in with you messing up there because it's so funny. Well I muted myself to cough and I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, so I like Superman character more than you do. Um yeah. I can see the limitations of him, but, but I think he works better with friendly Justice League than he does on his own. Oh yeah. And the Justice League cartoon is fantastic. Yeah, because of it people play off. I think it works better with people to play off. I think when he's stuck in his own, it can be a problem. But yeah, I, I've liked some of the films based on Superman, but and I prefer the most. I mean, the Superman one to three, I prefer over Man of Steel, and I prefer Superman Returns over Man of Steel. But I still like Man of Steel. I just think it's a bit yeah. too dark, too overly dark, and too much explosions, too much boom boom. Well, that's what fans way. wanted for years. Superman blowing stuff up. I don't know. It was like, Jesus, can you save someone at least? Come on. <laughs> Please. Not everyone has to die. Not everyone. Just most of the people. It's like, the thing is, in the second one, uh, Batman v Superman, they've, seen, they've been two years and brought up so much of the city. And you're like, there's no way in hell you could build up that much of the city in two years after what happened in that film. There's just no yeah. way. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. It's a comic I, book film, though. Yeah, I call shenanigans in that one. Mm-hmm. That's, that was pure shenanigans. Suggesting that and let, having people thinking people could actually believe that. They were taking yeah. the piss. They were really taking the piss. But the new Justice League, it was divided into, was it five or six chapters? It was six in an epilogue. Six chapters in the epilogue. I quite liked that because that meant for people that couldn't handle four hours, they knew where to, they could stop and pick up. Yeah, you're saying that as if you're thinking, you poor bastards. I know, I can't handle it. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll briefly cover, um, right, we've covered all the exact side of films up to now, I think, really. Mm-hmm. You hate Lex Luthor in the last film. Oh, I hate him. A yeah. Passion. It, um, you, um, did you like the extended version better than the shorter version? The extended version was better, but it just gave me too much likes, Luffer. All right, wow. There you go. But, but yeah, but we both agreed that ben, ben Affleck was a good Batman in that film. Yes. That was kind of the, the thing that kept that film going was Ben Affleck's Batman. Affleck's the bomb and Phantom, Joe. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> right, and... So, so the Justice League film, theatrical, we, we went to see it together. Yes. You took your kid, I took my nephew. I think they enjoyed it more than we did. Uh, Daniel didn't really like it that much. Oh, well. Because when I, I told him about this new cut, he was like, oh, I don't really care. I don't care. <laughs> I was like, all right, that cinema trip spoiled this Batman and Justice League for you. All right. I, I, I thought they'd like, maybe they would have just been polite then. Um, 
I think Daniel enjoyed a day out more than the film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Lucas liked it, but he never thought it was amazing or anything. I think he does much he much prefers the Avengers movies, really, than to his... I think Daniel's issue was like there was no build up to this film because he knew who Batman and Superman were, but the other characters were like, who are these? Yeah. And the film was um very Rushed. sporty and it felt like it'd been gutted. Yes, and it was. It was, it was yeah. And <laughs> so yeah, so we we now get to the Snyder cut because you can read up and all the what happened behind the scenes. There was all sorts of things. Um Jack Snyder's daughter died. He couldn't go on. So they brought in Josh Sweden to finish the film off and then that film um mutated. Muta- um one could say a, something horrible happened behind the scenes there. Because um, what happened should have happened to one director should not have done that to another director. Is my my opinion. Yeah. It's like, like I, I think there was a lot of disrespect going on there just by we see the, between both films how different they are. I think there was a lot, a lot of disrespect. There was a lot of scenes and that were cut out that shouldn't have been cut out, even if you had to try and cut it down. There was yeah. like, why the hell did you lose this scene? So, we're now going to the Snyder Cut. We can go back to the theatrical cut to bash it every so often. Yeah. Because that's kind of what's good for now. Because <laughs> I think everyone, right. I, mean, I, I haven't seen anybody say, oh, the theatrical cut's better. I haven't seen anyone say that. No, I've not seen that myself. Like, everyone's pretty much in agreement. Yeah, some people don't like this version, but even they're saying, well, this is consistently what it should be rather than that thing. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a, it's got some respect for being what it is. Yeah. So, um, the best way to describe it is if you've seen the theatrical cut, this is like what would happen if you actually saw that story with like motivation and characters and all a lot of the bullshit taken out, and there was lots yeah. of. It was just it was just um a lot weight here. It just felt like you were getting the information correctly in this one. In a way yeah. that you you never got in the last one. Last one somebody you, you were watching going, Why is this happening? I don't understand. I'm just gonna enjoy the action scene because I don't know why this is happening. And, and the explanation of giving is have just makes no sense. Like, for, like forever I was trying to work out you know the beginning of the theatrical one where Wonder Woman attacks the was those terrorists. Yeah. I was like, why is this happening? I never understood that. And I was like, what's going on? And it made sense in the Snyder Cut instantly. It was like, yeah, they're nutcases. Aye. That's it. That's all you needed. The lunatics. It was a better opening to this film, uh, the Snyder Cut as well. They need a stupid Superman talking to children. Oh, yeah, and with the, the moustache. See, <laughs> I've never been able to notice... A lot of people complain about the bad CGI. I've never noticed, because when I'm watching a film, I'm not staring at the man's lip. <laughs> How can you miss it, though? It's, it looks mutated. See, I watched your 4K Blu-ray when I was to prepare for the Snyder Cut. I still never noticed. Okay. I knew it was there. I knew what to look for, and I was staring at it going, it doesn't look that bad. His mouth goes down as if it's a stroke. And they notice the difference between him and, and normal. He's a bit that looks smooth, oh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it distracted me. Uh, well, you're uh, distracted uh, by uh, men's lips, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to avoid insulting you here because it's like I could see so many insulting things to him here. I'm trying not to go for the easy targets. <laughs> <laughs> Is that two fingers? I can insult there. <laughs> I was putting my glasses back up. <laughs> it looked something different. Um, so, yeah. So the so it starts off a really good sequence where Superman dies and the his yells floats through the whole kingdom and it opens up one of the mother boxes, which explains why the mother boxes have suddenly come alive. Yeah. And it's something so simple. And it's like okay, that I get that. That's understandable. And it shows you the big loss of Superman. And I'm very visually interested in way than any of the build-up you had in the theatrical. It's just very simple. It shows a morning, and it means you can get on with the rest of the story instantly. Because we get it. Yeah. 
So it's a much simpler thing. It's like, why did they cut that out? That was a simple explanation of why all this is happening. It just feels like it just feels weird why that was cut out. It just is like I don't get it. But I, I feel that way about a lot of stuff. I because that explains why they've woken up in this version. But when you watch the original version, there's no explanation. They've just woken up. <laughs> I know it's like weird, and it's just a simple thing that took two seconds mm-hmm. to expl- You know, it was like so simple. It's just the end of this bit where we we show you Superman's dead. His, his screams are so loud that it wakes up one of the mother boxes. Yeah. Instant, you instantly get it. And, you don't need and that wakes up the other ones in succession. Yeah. And then we go to um, they also cut out the, the dumb scene where Batman on the roof with that burglar. Yeah. Which, where the, where the thing explodes and there's like three mother box images from the body of a enemy and it's like, that never made sense. No. <laughs> but, but here you just get Batman going after Aquaman, because he knows something's coming. And, and it shows you him travelling there as well. I know, rather than just a one shot of him in the... Like, yeah, that, that whole sequence could cut down to almost nothing. And you actually need him travel to show how hard it was to get there, so the scene has some weight. And that's the big thing about a lot of these scenes. They show you how hard it is for the characters to do half the stuff to do, so it gives them weight as the scenes go on. Another one, it was just going cut, 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 and you're like, what, what, what? And a bit more dialogue between him and the locals before he speaks to Aquaman. Yeah, and Aquaman's a lot, a lot more simple. And there's less stupid jokes and... He's no as bro-centric. No. No, I mean, all the eccentricities, all these characters are toned way down. It's like, um... Let's not become the characters. <laughs> the Flash? Yeah, but if that's the character, the Flash, though. Ah, that's him. He is the comedy relief of the team. Yeah, he's just nervous energy. Mm-hmm. But he's if he still he does not come across as in the theatrical version the flash came across as some with, with mental health issues. Yeah. And that's why he's coming across as awkward and energetic. There is a difference, mm-hmm. <laughs> really. Like he knows what he's shot up in the, in this version, another version. He really doesn't. Yeah. But but anyway, so yeah, so Aquaman's instantly a better character. Instantly much I... better. Yes, they like him. It's a really good setup for him. But he's not having any Bruce Wayne's bollocks. And he just goes away and says, Nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Which is a funny, good way. It's a good way to start a film. It's like the guy says, No. Aye. After all that set up, and it was like, it's quite a nice beginning. And you get Wonder Woman doing a thing. And it's a, it's a more brutal sequence where lots of people get majorly messed up. Aye, and it's a better fight scene. And instead of just chucking the bomb up, she flies up with it. I know, then throws it. Yeah. Wonder Woman is so much better in this film than she was in the theatrical cut. Really. I'm still not a big fan of the movie version of Wonder Woman, but it's better than the other version that we had. <laughs> yeah, it's simpler. And she's um, she's to the point. It's like, mm. we have to deal with this and we're going to do it and that's it. Aye. Rather than a lot of the theatrical thing and all that stuff about her boyfriend and how she's hid out for so long and it which makes no sense compared to the Wonder Woman films and it's like apparently the, the people in Wonder Woman films were really annoyed at that because it was like that's not what we're doing in these films why are you doing this so mm-hmm. so so that made nonsense of all that um, and basically the, the whole film touches the build and it's just the atmosphere of what's going on you're seeing some some of Steppenwolf appear, who's a much better design and then you get to the first really big scene, big action scene which is when Stipwolf arrives and attacks the Amazonians which is right. so much better in this film so, so much, much better yeah, it's brutal I mean the, the whole I mean basically the Amazonian warriors are protecting the, the thing, they all die yeah, in horrible and ways. the queen but instead of in the original one, she just kind of runs out, sealing the place up and keeps going. But in this one, when she seals the place up, you can see her. She's quite sad that she's had to seal her pals in there. I know, and it's basically where the thing falls down as well. Mm. And it's really brutal. And, uh, there's, and after all that, Stepping Wolf just comes out and says, Is that it? And it's like, right. it's a, So they have to really work hard to get rid of this thing and they lose horribly again. And mm-hmm. it's. A really good sequence shows. It really shows how tough Steppenwolf is. 
and this one. Yeah. So it makes him more of a threat, which means every other action scene with him in it now feels like a threat, rather than... He's an actual one. character this time too. Yeah. Because the last time, you seen him one day, but it was a very much more of an adventure scene rather than an actual brutal scene where horrible things are happening, it's darker here. Yeah. And then when you... Because um, in the theatrical cut, then they go back and tell you the story of Steppenwolf and how he was defeated... And this time it's dark side, which means yeah. you get to see his boss, and also means as soon as he sets Steppenwolf off, you haven't just brought him back down again. Yeah. Because in the tackle cut, they set him up as the big villain, and then you see him getting beaten. Aye. It's like, well, there's a threat gone. Like, it's one of those things that, like, why the hell did this happen? Why did you have this in the film? Why are you just showing mm-hmm. your villain being easily defeated? <laughs> Aye. And this time it's not. And it's they, a young dark side. Yeah, and it's. And and, he, and he's taking it by Amy's, who's the villain from Wonder Woman movie, which is yeah. pretty cool. So there's a lot of being the the flashback stuff I really like, showing all the, the armies of the world come together and beating the hell out of Dark Side. I mean, there's yeah. um, there is a bunch more of an epic feel to this film. It does feel like a, a big dark fantasy movie rather than a superhero movie, which has been pointed out. The music's out a lot. much better. Oh yeah, Junkie XL did the music, so they chucked out all the music from the. Joss Whedon version. I mean, we should have, we should avoid calling the theatre. We'll just call it Joss Whedon version. Because he, he's the on a big The weed, The Whedon disaster. Because mm-hmm. like, the music works in scenes that I didn't like in the uh, Whedon cut. Say like the scene where Aquaman, he's walking down, he's down in the whiskey, throws it in the sea, then he goes into the water. Yeah. In the Whedon cut, it's generic rock music to try and make him seem badass. But yeah. in this one... The music was it suited the moment. Yeah, it's also you have a much more breathing space. Like it feels like it, I'm pretty sure the Whedon cut that was like half the length. They were yeah. rushing to it, and this one takes its time. And there's another bit where the, the, these women are singing as he goes into the water, Aye. and it feels much more like you've seen a world that's not your world. It's something different. There are different rules for it, mm. and you don't understand it. But it feels much more tied to the past, and it's like. Oh, I get this. This is showing you they come from different worlds and they're not going to understand each other very well. And yeah, they made sense of the world. And I got really worked for Aquaman because you get a sense that he does come from a different world. And it's the rules of this world of means that he's never really going to cross over that much. Yeah, really. But you also get you know, the scene where he rescues the guy in the ship, yeah, during the storm. That feels much more brutal than this one, it feels much harder. and I think it's a yeah. lot more normal sound effects rather than tons of music through it. And because in, in the theatrical, the weekend mess, you feel that was in so we remember Aquaman's in the movie. Yeah. And this one, it's just showing you Aquaman what he's doing. That's mm-hmm. his life. That's what he does, really. It's just showing you, giving you an example of what his life's like rather than, oh, God, it'd be better yeah. when put a character back in the movie. Mm-hmm. And a, Plus, you got to see a bit more Aquaman with Willem Dafoe. Yeah, and that was good fun. Because mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe's always good fun in this and these kind of things. Oh, he always yeah. is. Yeah. And you also get to... I mean, the two people, two characters I think get messed around most in the, in the Whedon mess was really Cyborg and Flash. Yeah, both of them had much better. Both of them had most of the best moments cut out in mm-hmm. a way that made you think that Whedon really hated the two actors. Yeah, you know, which everyone knows him and Ray Fisher didn't go on, but did he really hate Ezra Miller that much as well? Because they took out the Ezra Miller's opening, which he should have been heroic, and his big heroic moment at the end. It's like the two yeah. most important parts of the the film for this character that cut out. See, a lot of people were complaining about the Flash's opening because you know when he's saving Harkin through the air, yeah, he's he's pure caressing and all that. So that makes sense because you seen two seconds earlier that he just slightly touched a glass window and it shattered while he's gone fast. So he's yeah. got to be gentle while saving her. It's also he's still working at his powers. He's still kind of working it out. He's in, a, in the flash zone. He's he's still kind of that point where he can do good stuff, but he's still not quite sure himself yet. He's uh, he's trying he's to be ne- gentle, make sure yeah. he's a killer. Yeah, no, he's in the early days of being the Flash. It kind of works. It's it's also he's all of his powers, and it's a really beautiful sequence. Yeah. I don't read it as perverted, I just read it as 
The Flash is... I, I seen odd. it in just The Flash, but then I seen people online complaining about it, and I was like, they clearly don't understand what he's doing. He's trying not to hurt her. <laughs> yeah, he's done to her so that he can grab onto her mm-hmm. and save her. As long as and I thought he was copping a feel, he was just getting on the right position. It was just a good coincidence. He could cop a feel at the same time. He could have, but he's too yeah. fast. We wouldn't have seen him. Yeah. But yeah, so, but that, that was one of his best moments, and, and we it was lost. It's like, why was this lost? Why did you cut this out? This is a really expensive sequence, and it showed you his powers, and it showed you... And it set him up to Flash. Instead, they have him yapping like crazy non-stop in that reading mess. Uh, it shows and, that he's not just fast, he's quite powerful with his speed. Yeah, and he's deliberate. Mm-hmm. He's careful what he's doing. He's not just like crazy. He's actually he like... before he acts. Yeah. He knows there's dangers involved, if it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I, I like to flash a lot more on this one. Something I'm interested in this film now, after this film, yeah. rather than do we have to see a Flash movie, which was or, or a film theatrical release. It was like, do we really need yeah. one? But now it's like, no, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, now there's a point to the Flash, yeah. And Can Cyborg get, get utterly boned in the oh, I... mess. I mean, it's like they could have um, easily made a, a cyborg movie with all the footage they cut out of the reading cut. <laughs> I know it was insane how much they cut out. It was like, why do you do that stuff? I mean, the, the stuff of having his mum. Why would you take that out? See, there's a lot of stuff they cut out that makes no sense of them cutting out because in this version you see that he's got a mother box in his cupboard. Yeah, but you don't see that in the reading cut. Then later on, they're like, we need the other box. And he disappears and comes back with it. And the explanation where we got it from... I know. He's just, I've got it. Here you see, he, he, he had it, then he went up something looking for it, he buried it, and then he went back and got it. But he... Uh, and also the, the fact that he, there's much more about him and his father. Because in the reading version, there was a lot of scenes like that, but they were all boring. They were all just so boring. It was like, please don't have him on a scene like this. Because they, they weren't about anything. They were just... I like his dad, but the entire time I seen him on screen, I'm just thinking, he's making Skynet. He's making Skynet. That's, that's Dyson right there. That's Dyson. <laughs> I know. But it was a much better relationship, him and his father. Yeah. It was much more spiky. And plus, yeah. this one, Cyborg has a personality. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's walks around. Moody for the sake of being Moody. No, he's walking around awkwardly in this weird kind of thing that. Is kind of an old, old ham, or an old like universal monster walk. He's walking with like, Igor, basically. Ah, he's like his, kind of yeah, yeah. He's like, he's not he's not sure of his body until the end, and that makes sense. Suddenly, he's like mm. using physicality to tell you a lot about the character, and you're like, oh, this is interesting. This is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is, you notice between these are car characters because they've got a, a lot of the screen time. I mean, it's not just Batman and Wonder Woman. Yeah. And they, we didn't mess. They cut out all that stuff and had Batman and Wonder Woman argue, and you could tell the actors were not into it. Yeah, you could tell the actors were like, "Why are we doing these scenes? What the hell's going on here?" Was... Mm-hmm. And there's I mean, a lot more Alfred this time. I know. I mean, um, he, put this way, you can. I mean, you just look at Ben Affleck in this film with the Snyder cut and him in the theatrical cut. You can see an actor who was engaged in one film and who wanted to go home in another film. Yeah, because like before the uh, Zack Snyder left Justice League, Affleck was all excited to do Bat- more Batman films. Yeah, then Whedon came on, and suddenly was like, I don't want to do Batman anymore. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was. Yeah, he did seem to be because he was one of the producers in this film, an executive producer, yeah. so he must have seen his power go, and um, mm-hmm. and he was like, um, it was actually getting pushed into more scenes than the character needed to be in. Because the character was really about being the force of nature that was going to bring them all together. And then he basically lets them fulfill the potential. You know, that's his story yeah. in this film. And the Whedon cut, I personally thought Batman was a bitch. And it ruined, it personally ruined Affleck's Batman for me. But then when I watched this version, I was like, oh, they've restored it. They've restored Batman. <laughs> it makes much more sense. He, he is... Mm. He's a leader when he needs to be, but he's not always... He's trying to make amends. Yeah, but he's not, like, whining about it every two minutes. Mm-hmm. He's just trying week, his best. 
yeah, the reading cutties and talks about Superman all the time as if they were best pals. And this one, it was not a spiky relationship. I, I, I failed him because I spent too much time trying to divide us rather than bring us together. Yeah, like he knew his mistake. That was it, and it was very simple. So it's a much better character. It worked better. Plus, he didn't try and hog center screen. He let other actors come in and actually get their have their moment, really, mm. which was good. Because it was a team film, not just a Batman film. Which is one yeah. of the things with film is like, you know, Batman understood that he's not the centre of attention. He's not, he doesn't have to be in every bloody scene. Mm. Um, I also, I, I liked Superman a lot more in this film. I, I think the resurrection was a lot better handled. Yes. Because it, it was also that had like half the dialogue that had another one. We basically just watched him walk around and figure it out. And his eyes He's looking at it. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need. You just need figuring it out, and it's all about little grace notes rather than having speeches about coming back from the dead or something, which is. And they cut out that stupid Aquaman freaking out. Can't remember that bit. That's... He's sitting there, and the reading cut. He's like, "Oh, he's freaking out, man. He's freaking out. He's he's not right. He's not right." <laughs> oh, and they cut the pet cemetery jokes as well. Yeah, which was really. Um, yeah, it got to the point of bringing back Superman a lot quicker. It was just mm. like, this is a tactical decision, we have to try it, because otherwise we're just running with this mother box. We need Superman, he's the only one that can defeat Stedman. We'll... It's more like, we don't have the power to beat this guy, we need Superman, we're going to take him to the risk. Aye. Which worked a lot better. And also how they lost the mother box, they actually lose it in a fight this time, rather than having it fly oh, over somewhere and be they forget about it and it's like, it makes them look really stupid in the theatrical the reading mess mm-hmm. it's like why did you do that that makes the, your heroes look stupid mm-hmm. and that's one you actually lose you actually the cyborg loses his dad and it's much more moving scene and it's and his dad's the yeah. one who does the thing that actually helps him find where Stipple's hiding but yeah. sacrifice himself which is much more powerful rather than they have all this gobbledygook going on in the reading mess that is like I can't even be bored listening to this garbage. It's like, I'm not even going to try f- listen to this. It's like, we know you're going to find out where they are. I don't care what your explanation and, is. When Superman's it's, resurrected, Lois Lane just happens to be there rather than being brought in by Alfred. I know, but it's set up earlier, though. And it's, you know, oh, but it makes that's much more sense in this version, though. Because she does that as a habit every day. Yeah. Yeah, it works better. Yeah, rather I than... liked her character more in this version. Oh yeah, it was much better, because the, the scene with her and uh, Martha was much better than the other jokey one they had. Martha? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it was a much better scene. Again, it's like, yeah. why did you cut that scene out? That was much better than the scene you had in there. That was, that other scene was terrible. It was a scene that was like, oh god, we're in trouble. <laughs> it just <laughs> makes me other... feel like Whedon was still a Team Marvel fan and was trying to, sac- <laughs> trying to sabotage DC. That's the only thing that I can figure out. I've got a theory, but I'll get back to that once we've went through more of the film. Um, like, but yes, yes, Superman is a much better character. He's much more... I like how they keep him dark. Like, mm. when he gets to Steppenwolf, he beats the crap out of him. Oh, I... He just, he's in a rage. He's like, he's like, yeah, you really thumps him. This is... This is like two guys born outside a pub, and one of them's got the advantage, really. I also liked how um, Wonder Woman decapitates Sip moving way out, just like as he's flying away, she just decapitates him. like, I saw you, I'm gonna get you. Aye. It's like, dark side's just no impressed. Yeah. It's like, um, she's not letting that guy live. <laughs> There's no way. It's like, um, yeah, Wonder Woman's more brutal in this film. She does not care. She will, if someone messes with her, she will kill you. That's she killed it. that terrorist guy at the beginning, too. Yeah, but the, the doom and the guy exploded. It's like, mm-hmm. whoa. So she went through um, spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> yeah. Aye. Turned the guy into basic explosive. Uh, she just turned up in mush. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, as you can tell, we both had a lot more fun with this film than another one. Oh, we both I, enjoyed. I didn't think it felt like four hours. It felt like two and a half to me. It didn't feel like the three hours to me, but I, I don't mind that because I enjoy long films. 
But yeah. I, also, I liked how the stakes were raised each time something happened. And you can understand the stakes. It wasn't like, because I always felt in the other one, you were, in theory, they were getting raised, but they weren't because they'd stop enough jokes in it and they'd stop and obscure it with lots of scenes that made no sense. And you'd never, you'd always lose sight of the actual um, momentum of the story or where it was meant to be going or what's meant to be happening. And it just get annoying because you really lost all sight of what you're meant to be doing. This was only two hours and you end up thinking, this film feels aimless as hell. And this one is four hours and I actually feel like each situation led to the next situation, led to the next situation. So you, you actually feel passage of time, too. It's no all taking place in like a day, like the first one felt like. Yeah. Because the first one it felt like, there's Steph Wolf, he's got the first box. Oh, he's got the second box. <laughs> Suddenly, but this one, like, there's a big time difference him get because yeah. he's searching for them. Yeah, yeah, he has to put the work in to get them. Because it mm. just feels like he just slaps past the first two people easily. Like he knocks out the Wonder Woman people. The lanterns are basically a joke to him. Instead, yeah. here you have um, they're much more brutal in response and um, it's a much more brutal fight. He nearly and, gets killed in Atlanta in the, by the lanterns. Yeah, he really has to really work his way. Plus, he tortures some of them to get information, which is yeah. pretty brutal. And then, and then, and the, and the, and the, we didn't mess the third one. They lose the last mother box, important one, because they're stupid. And this one, no, it's like um, as soon as the mother box is used to bring Superman back, he's he knows it's been used, so he's coming after it, and he's going to keep coming yeah. to the Terminator. That's yeah. a massive difference, mm-hmm. really. And we get to the ending. Now, the ending, um, the end action scene felt so much leaner. It was better coloured as well. So yeah, much better coloured. Better coloured. Color, but also felt lean. Like, it was like, this is, we're going to this point, now we're doing this, now we're doing this. And it always felt there was a direction to the action scenes. Like, I know why we're doing this. Because in the Whedon vest, it was like, we're doing these action scenes so it was an action scene. And, it's like, and then you'd strip it, random civilians that didn't need to be there. Yeah, I know. But it's also the action saved. Beats with Batman. That was like, why is he there? Why is he not dead? And then this one is much more like I'm going to be the guy that will push through and take away with the eye of the storm, so you just clock and get in there and actually do your job. And mm-hmm. it felt much more motivated because he's just using brute force the whole time. I would ramble on on these demons, and it made more sense because he never goes in and tries to doing but that that's like this is my job i'll do this aye and that made sense so when you yeah, back like, to him, you always felt he was doing something important he was saving them from the demons by being the person who they were he was just yeah. being like the tank really against these mm-hmm. multiple enemies so but he allowed, couldn't just batter through them by himself he needed yeah certain because it's human, because like, they didn't know what about when the Whedon cut, like Batman was just fighting these things hand to hand without any effort. I know it was just weird. It was like in this one, it looked much more like, well, that's exhausting. He's gonna, I could maybe take it about three or four before he starts to wear it. Yeah, I know because he's using the guns in this one and he's going from place to place, blowing up their he's mm. tied to like through from plate bit to bit to blowing up the different areas so they can't actually fire at his team. It's just tactical. I'm going to go to this one, I'm going to do that one, I'm going to do that one. And he's protecting the Flash. The Flash is flying around doing stuff. And he's got a better role this time around. The Flash has something to do. The Flash yeah. has an important job in this one. Like, mm-hmm. um, in, in the... Um, Cyborg has an important role. And basically, when they go inside to the... to face Steppenwolf, basically it's Wonder Woman and Aquaman are beating up Steppenwolf while those two do their jobs. And then Superman comes in and beats the crap out of Steppenwolf in a um, the ultimate beatdown. Like he doesn't even try. <laughs> he doesn't even try and be very Superman. He just beats the hell out of him. This is like Superman from Superman three level. I'm going to be a dick with this. Right. <laughs> I don't care. You know, and um, he's like, yeah. do you know what happened to the last person that tried to destroy this planet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's. It's just lots of fun. Um, but the good thing is, you actually understand each, each person's role. It's like, yeah, I mean, basically Wonder Woman and Aquaman are like, okay, we're the defenders of Cyborg. That's our job. We're his minder. Yeah. And you got it straight away. 
and that's it. There's nothing else, and it's a very simple action scene. And it's like, understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and that's fine because it means all the action actually works. Yeah, Rather there's no jokes in it. You know, there's no, it's vague. And then uh, Steppenwolf makes a mistake of suggesting he killed her mother when he hadn't. And mm-hmm. she really starts to really beat the shit out of him for that. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. Aye. Which means he loses his head at the end because of that. Uh, but they actually fail at first, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah, they, they fail all the way through it. The Justice mm-hmm. League fail completely, consistently. They only really get together at the end. Because, I mean, Steppenwolf is always kicking back at them. So, but I'm talking about combining the boxes. Is Steppenwolf succeeds. I know. up to the flash, and it's brilliant the way they did that. Yeah, because they set it up earlier on. It's like, he, when he goes fast enough, he can reverse time. Mm-hmm. And he's basically fighting against the wave of the anti-life to actually um, solve it. And it's basically him and Cyborg have to... He has to get there and let Cyborg do his thing as well. So, they, they're the two that actually... Are important the two yeah. characters who seem least important, and it works because they're not having a speech about it. It's like, oh, we're the most important. Ultimately, it's like, no, that's a job they do it. That's it. Yeah. So it works really nicely. It's a a very good action beat. Hmm. But it works really well, and it sets up stuff nicely for films that we're never going to get. <laughs> I know. But it, it was a much leaner film. We actually knew what everyone was doing. You know, stupid. Mm-hmm. Everyone was doing, and uh, in the way to characters a lot more. They were much more involved, involved without trying to have tons of jokes yeah. about them. And then we have the epilogue, really, which is lots of epilogues, like half an hour epilogues. Yeah. What did you think of them? I thought they were not bad, not bad to be honest. Yeah, I didn't think they were they were as good as the rest of the film, though. I thought the best bit of the film was the film, like the epilogues. I liked the bits where you've seen certain things that I liked in the Whedon mess that was, were actually turned out to be Zack Snyder stuff, which surprised me. I was very surprised yeah. that the, the joke about um, Bruce Wayne buying the bank was a Snyder right. joke. I was very surprised by that one. Um, I always liked that joke. I liked yeah. it. <laughs> it, was very, it was very Batman thing you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get to see the um, cyborgs starting to come together and... Um, the Flash is starting to figure himself out. So everyone's kind of slowly becoming mm-hmm. who they're going to be, ultimately. They're, they're slowly becoming what their, their place in the world is going to be, which works quite nicely. I was nicely surprised that they actually, the Snyder had actually done the bit with Superman when he turns and sees the Flash running. Aye. Because it was like, that was a bit that everyone liked in the film. Mm-hmm. And everyone thought it was a reshoot, and it turns out it wasn't. Oh, that's one of the best bits, though. So. I know it's, it's just like, to flash his face. <laughs> well, that's a really good sequence. I mean, because it's Superman versus everyone else, and it's like a really well made sequence. And you watch the side of cut, and it's like all the best bits came from the original show, and the bits that were a bit cringeworthy were the bits that were added. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and I like the fact that this one, Batman didn't have uh, any plans. It was just like he hoped for the best. Aye. And yes, he, he took, it took him longer to get there. And everyone else because he's just a human, which is a nice mm-hmm. touch. It was like uh, it wasn't a tactical thing. It was just like, yeah, I'm human. You, you lot go and deal with him. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Aye, which was nice. It was, yeah. I mean, the whole, I mean, there's a lot of those details worked a lot better. But, but we did have the um, the nightmare sequence, which I quite liked because it was darker again. Showed the night of the woods yeah. yet. I mean, Superman's still a threat potentially. Unless yeah. they figure out why, what's the thing that caused me to go mad? So it's like you kind uh, of see that in the night where you see Superman holding the bump body of Lois. I know, and you get that idea. Plus, you see the other other members of the league dead, mm-hmm. and I quite like that. And um, it's so messed up, even the Joker's on their side. Mm-hmm. Oh, he makes one joke that I wasn't a fan of. What was that one? The reach around joke is like, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, but I like the I like the fact that Batman's still not having any nonsense. It's just like, shut up. I'm gonna, I will kill you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I don't care. I'm gonna get you for the for the stuff. Um, but I, I like the mood of that. I mean, it was quite nice. But you didn't need it. But I quite liked it. But I also liked having seen the Martian Manhunter finally, because he's yes. one of my favorites. I always liked Martian Manhunter. So it's a really cool character. 
Yeah. I, could, I think you could have had him in a lot earlier. You could have brought him in a lot earlier. Since he was technically in the first two films, but in disguise, and it's like, you could have just hinted at him a lot more. Yeah. Because it's now it now looks a bit of a waste of time not having hinted. Mm. But yeah, so it was... Um, I thought it was a very enjoyable film. I really had a good time with it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I could easily watch it again if I wanted to. Yeah. I couldn't say that about the Whedon Cut. <laughs> no, I mean, we Whedon Cut, I tried to like it. I really did try. I'm done with it. I don't need to watch it anymore. I've got Snyder's version. I know. So if I ever like, fancy watching Justice League, that's the one I'll put on. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's weird because it's very different from the Superman 2 situation where Superman 2, they started, they shot bits of it when they shot Superman. They didn't shoot that much of it. And then the director and the producers fell out, so they brought someone new on. And the person they brought on to direct it was a very good director. He could do all good stuff. And I actually liked Superman 2 better than Superman. Really. I mean, he did a donut cut later on, but I didn't think it was that good. I thought it was like, this is not... There's so much stuff from the Richard Lester version that it's, it doesn't really count yeah. a cut. But this one, it was like, God, everything they did there was worse. Everything was just worse. There was Aye. nothing. So what's your theory about the Whedon cut? All right. Um, the Whedon cut um, is based on what I've heard around is like he was a bit annoyed because of what happened to Age of Ultron because Marvel had trashed some of his ideas. Which, I like Age of Ultron, but it's obviously a film that was meant to be longer and it was cut down yeah. to a short time. But I also think that it should have been better written in the first place because he knew there was a limit to how much time he had to tell the story. And I think he didn't finish the script off the way he should have before into production and solved some of those problems then. Yeah. And so you end up getting some sequences in that film that were too long, like the early parts, and then the other stuff is scrunched up. And he tried to cover a lot of it with dialogue, and he was very annoyed by the fact that it wasn't was well received. So, so after that, he left Marvel and blamed them for all that stuff. And I think if you look at a lot of his films, he does tend to go towards lots of snarky jokes and dialogue and stuff to cover his problems in his films. I like some of the stuff he's done, other stuff not so much. So I'm not a hater, but I'm not a person who loves everything he does either. But when yeah. it came to Snyder version, because he'd been a script doctor for years as well, we'd come in and do some work in films. Like, he would try and punch up scripts. Like, he punched up some dialogue for Speed. He, mm. I told you he did the end section on Waterworld, the bit that wasn't very good. Mm. <laughs> but it was the worst part of the film. So he's done some... He's been in Toy Story, so he's done a lot of good stuff. But I think a lot of time... We become a script doctor. He came in and did some stuff for X-Men and most of it wasn't used. And I think you get bitter about the fact that you're going to do the work and then no one uses it anyway. And I think yeah. this time they asked to bring him in. We need help with this thing. It's too long and the director has to go because it's a family thing. And he just thought, finally I can show them, I can show that I know how he sort this stuff because I'm a good script doctor and I can... Mm. And I'm annoyed at the fact that I, I wasn't appreciated in Age of Ultron. And he was the wrong person to bring in because he was, pe- mm-hmm. he was pissed off. But he was also, his way of solving things was not visual. It's all with tons of dialogue and one more talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. And so that's what he did, which he basically did that to a film that was all more about visuals than talk. Yeah. And it was just a mismatch, complete mismatch. And everything he did, he didn't understand what the beats of the story actually were. He didn't understand the importance of certain story beats and certain stylizations. Yeah. He just tried to crush his style on that, and he didn't have any respect for what Zack Snyder did because he thought he was just a visual filmmaker. He didn't understand drama or something, mm-hmm. and he just had a disrespect for what had been done because there was there's been talk about him slagging off the Snyder cut, you know, shoot, the reshoots, like slagging yeah. off what had been done. It was just a sense of he didn't have any real respect for what the work had been done, and he was going to show them that. He could do the script doctrine to the end degree of being director as well. Because mm-hmm. he could have been a script doctor in the past and it hadn't always worked out so well. Yeah. But, but 
He didn't get Joss Whedon who had done Avengers. He got Joss Whedon who wrote Alien Resurrection. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got yeah. the bad one. You got the one who who was on a script that he didn't understand, a project he didn't understand. He was doing stuff that was boring. He didn't understand the charms of what had been done before. And he kind of resented it. And that's, my, that's all my opinion. Yeah. And you got a very bitter set of reshoots that miss so many of the actual charms of what Zack Snyder had done. So many important scenes that were cut out, the introduction of Flash, the ending. You know, basically the ending where mm-hmm. Flash did something. All the stuff with Cyborg and his mom. So many plot yeah. mechanics. And it was like, they said, I was told it has to be under two hours. It was like one of those things, like, why would you take that job? Because it can't be under two hours. There's no way you can do this film in under two hours to mm-hmm. set it all up and have the characters work. There's no way it can be done. So why would you take that job unless you're trying to prove something? And why would you try and prove something if he'd just done two Avengers films that yeah. would both be a fortune? It's like, it's almost like it been self-destructive to me. It's like, mm-hmm. why are you so pissed off? Because... It seems weird because he was at the top of the world, like in regards to his reputation. And after Justice League, it really was his reputation took a real battering because I think everyone knew that he'd messed it up. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone had seen it, seen it, it messed it up in some way. And now this new version came out, you people see, people assumed that Zack Snyder had really messed up and he'd come in and try and save to be had done a good job. Now it's like, no, this was a good film, but he really messed up. So it was, it was a lot worse for him because you, you watch the, the Snyder vers, version and you think, this made sense. Why would you actually sabotage a film this badly? If, for a job, why would you see a job in the first place? It's impossible. You know, that's so why would you do it? It just feels like no. he, he was pissed off with something, probably the age of Ultron, and he took a job he should have taken, really. He should have just gone away and did something else. But he took the job and it was the stupidest thing he could do because there are a lot of reports that he was in a bad mood during the making of this film and he wasn't very happy. He was rushing through things. Because, I mean, Ray Fisher obviously hated him. Apparently Gal Gadot didn't like him much either. Jason Momoa has more or less hinted that it wasn't all great. And I'm sure uh, Affleck didn't like him much. Affleck has been, because he's a movie star, he knows to shut up. Really, and just say stuff behind the scenes, but he walked out in Batman after that. Mm-hmm. It's like this was a disaster. This was a problem film they had, but it wasn't really a problem film. It was just like you need to find a way to cut it down. They had to accept this was a two and a half hour film. Yeah, it really it almost was. feels like we didn't, didn't want Cyborg in the film to start with. I know it's weird. It's just like he hated this character. It was like he really hated the character. But to the be character fair, was I like the character of Cyborg, but. I never liked him in the Justice League. To me, he's a Teen Titans character. Yeah, but the thing is, in this narrative, he needed him. He needed him yeah. for a story. And it was like, they took him out everything he was shooting about him. It was like, why would you do that? And why would you take out everything you need to put this character up? It goes against any story mechanics you need. And why would you make Flash so weird? Why would you make yeah. Flash that weird? It, they'd really pushed him as far as you'd go for weirdness and the Snyder Cut. All you'd do is just leave that and it would yeah. be fine. If you look at the Snyder Cut, there's just enough of him being a bit odd that you get the idea, but he's not really odd. He's just a bit odd. He's yes. the odd one. And why would you just make everyone care? Why do you make them all hate each other? Because they all hate each other not that cut until they're defending each other. And this one, they're trying to work a problem out. It's a different yeah. dynamic. It just feels weird. I don't get why we do this film. Why we come in and try and save this film? We didn't I think they should have waited until Zach was ready to come back. Either that, or just say, "Look, can we find a director who can finish it off for you that is more suitable to what you were trying to do?" Yeah, we can be a compromised person who can finish the job off, so you're not. But I think Warner Bros. want a different approach to the film. They didn't know what the film they'd got. So they'd use what had happened to get rid of Zack Snyder and 
they brought mm. on Joss Sweden to do an Avengers type movie with what they had. What they had wasn't an Avengers type movie. It was something else. And but what they did to that film was just atrocious. It was just like, how can you do something that bad to that director? How can you really butcher his film? That yeah. that's the thing that really bugs me. It's like, how can you do that to another director at all? I mean, surely you, even if you don't like the director's films. Surely you have to have a level of professional respect for how hard a job it is. Why would you mm. do that to someone else? Especially someone who'd just gone through what Zack Snyder had gone through. It just feels just mean and nasty. To me. Mm. It's like there's a meant by like some sort of professional um respect to each other that just yeah. wasn't near what Zach what happened here. There just wasn't any Well, that, this is my interpretation of what he was right. doing. I, mean, I just wanted to hear your theory. That was my theory, anyway. Just from watching the film, I just felt like there was a level of disrespect to the director there that was pretty apparent. And it was because, again, they cut out so many scenes that were good. Yeah. Like, so why would you would give you each that? movie out of 10? Like, um, the Whedon cut... Five because of the stuff that was already there. I think more than anything. I mean, now I think there was there was enough good stuff already there that they used, but it was butchered mm-hmm. by really terrible filmmaking. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd give the Snyder Cup an eight. I think there are some problems with it still, but I still yeah. really enjoy it. As the, I like you, if I want to watch Justice League, I watch this one. It's so much better yeah. film. You know, yeah. Can't there, wait there, there, there's a physical copy out. You, you sent me a link. There's where they're starting to sell them now. They're starting yeah, to pre-orders are up. Yep. So it's like, it's a, obviously a success. So um, mm. that, that's would be the one I'd watch. What about yourself? Oh, this is, uh, I would give the Whedon cut four point nine because I can't give that film a five. Just can't. <laughs> oh, basically 10? a five. Uh, 10, 4. 9, and I'd give the Whedon cut an eight. Solid eight. No, no. Wait a minute. The Whedon cut. You mean the Snyder cut? Uh, the Whedon cut gave 4.9 out of 10. Yep. And, and the, the Snyder, Snyder cut gave an 8. But you said Whedon cut for the 8. Oh, did I? Yeah. It was like, what? Uh, I was on a roll and my, my tongue couldn't keep up with me. <laughs> yeah. Your, brain's, your brain was destroying you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, it's not a perfect film, but it is a very enjoyable one. It was yes. a nice surprise. Mm-hmm. You know, which I liked. Because uh, I, I, I'm hoping it'd be good. Because what, what would have happened going through it all? Mm. Uh, but you never know. Because I mean, the only time this has happened in the past is when what happened with um, the Exorcist prequel, where yeah. Paul Schrader made a film. They hated it that much. They made a new film and had a couple of scenes uses stock footage basically. Mm. And end up re releasing releasing that other film eventually because the film they made him so hated that to do something. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly the same thing's happened here. And it's like, doesn't anyone learn? You can't once you well, once yeah. the ship's out, that's it, it's done. Mm-hmm. Just take the hit and you don't like the film. I'm hoping that this is a start that the studios might start listening to fans in the first place to yeah, avoid this kind of shit. I know, but a lot of fans are stupid. Because we got that last year with Sonic the Hedgehog. That was a small victory, and I see this as an even bigger victory. Yeah, but there's there's also, you look at any fans, anything they cast anybody as Batman, they go mental with anybody they cast in Batman. I mean, look at me. Yeah, I'm Keaton. just talking about in terms of filmmaking, they're going to pull the finger out and maybe look at what people are actually looking for in a film before they start writing the film. Yeah, but some films and um, comic books are different. No, you have to try and adapt them. I think it's a yeah. case of don't go crazy. Try and find an angle on it that's going to be good, mm-hmm. really, more than anything. Just find an angle that works for you. But because no matter what you do, you're, there's still going to be bad films out there. There's still going to be like amazing Spider-Man films. There's still going to be like... <laughs> we have to kick that as any time we can. Yes. But, I mean... No matter how much you want to kick uh, the the Whedon version of Justice League, 
it's better than the Amazing Spider-Man films. Oh, hi. That's not hard, though. That's not hard. I know, but there's... Um, I think with fans, you have to... I mean, we look at the difference between you and me. I mean, uh, it would change anything in the comic books. You and I read about it, and I go, oh, well, I'm interested to see what happens. But there's probably a kind of middle ground between those two things that's healthy to get um, mm. something good. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd probably... The things I, I would accept as an adaptation would probably make you nuts. But you're thinking it has to be exactly the same as the comic books would drive me nuts. So you probably kind of have to have a middle ground. Well, I don't know. I don't want it to be exactly the same. I'd like them to at least respect the resource material. Oh, you're so sad. <laughs> hey, keep this up and I'll make you watch all the Resident Evil films and we'll talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. you'll hear me rant about source material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's... Um, I know what you mean. It's just that I like them to mess around with it. I don't mind if it's a mess, but you, you, you're. Uh, I can still remember your rant about um, the the fog planet thing, the big giant ghost thing from uh, Fantastic Four to Galactus. Galactus. Yeah, I should tell everybody uh, when that was announced. I was in a bus with James, right, and he ranted the whole bus journey about it. It was on and on about it. It was like it's only a film. <laughs> I remember that. Galactus is one of my favorite like, Marvel characters, and know, they turned them into a cloud. I know, but a whole bus turned into a statue of him up there. You. I didn't know who the character was. I was just nodding, like he's he's lost. There's something broken in his brain. He's <laughs> there's something. He's not right. Nope. So I remember that just after it been announced. I'm not sure it was announced then, or just been a, a few days or something. But it's the first time I saw it since it was announced. And you just went straight on about it. It was like, blah, 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 blah. It was like, okay. It okay. was that day. Yeah, it was like, whoa. I don't, I don't it's like one of those things, it's like, you can't even say to you, I don't care. Because it doesn't matter. Oh, no, I don't to... care that you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, well, that's been that way for years, though. Oh, I. Yeah. yeah. I'm setting my ways now. Yes. I mean, um, I can always get a good rise at you when we mention Ghostbusters 2016. Doesn't exist. <laughs> yes. Don't yes. know what you're talking about. Yes. But that's that's Cam Bersh of you whenever you mention that. Uh, over uh, half of what, six, uh, five years to of mockery. Calm myself down. <laughs> no, uh, you don't know, the pre-production for two years, so it's longer because mm. we were. Let's face it. Um, after the release was actually calmed down compared to what we did to you before release. Yes. If we, we were to... having... That was just so much fun. I was like... I really wish we had made a sequel to that one just so I could uh, enjoy torturing again. Never. Yeah. I, I think the one person who enjoyed it more than me was your brother, I think. Well, he still gets enjoyment from that. Yes. Yes. I can guess. <laughs> So um, I'll stop a recording now as we finish up because I think we've talked and we can see a bit Justice League. Aye. Yep. Um, so bye. Thanks. Bye bye.